All right, we just got to our campsite. Check this out. You're not gonna believe this. This is far and away the best view I've ever had at a campsite. Let me show you what we're looking at right now. It's now day three of our Utah trip, and after two days camped just outside Zion National Park, we're back on the move, making our way east towards Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, where we plan to get remote and spend the next few days exploring the backcountry. Well, we're here at the BLM Visitor Center in Big Water for Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, and we just stopped by here because we wanted to get an idea of Anything we need to know, anything about road conditions or road closures, always a good idea before starting on a journey off-road. So that's what we did. Here we got the green light, everything is good to go. So I just came out from inside and it's actually pretty cool in there. They have uh, some dinosaur exhibits and that's a pretty cool spot. So if you are in the area, definitely recommend checking it out. But we're about to get underway and spend the next couple of days exploring Grand Staircase Escalante and see what it has to offer. So it should be a good time. A few minutes later, and we were back on dirt, and almost immediately, we're faced with our first obstacle. Oi. All right, so we just came up on a water crossing, trying to figure out where the trail goes. Um, right behind my shoulder is where we thought the road uh, would continue on to, but uh, this right here looks like it's a little too high for us. So we're actually gonna come through here and let me flip the camera around, show you. Now we're gonna drive around here and come through this way and cross over there. So stay tuned, let's see how this goes. <laughs> While, admittedly, this crossing may have been a bit anticlimactic, making it to the other side opened the door to pushing deeper into Grand Staircase Escalante. And that is exactly what we did. The further we ventured into the Grand Staircase, the more evident it became that we were traveling through a special place. Covering 1.9 million acres, Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument dominates Southern Utah and serves as the centerpiece to Zion, Bryce, the Grand Canyon, and Lake Powell. The Grand Staircase got its name from the various rock layers that form terraces which resemble a set of stairs. This succession of unbroken rock layers displays more of Earth's continuous geologic history than any other place on the planet, and stretches from the Grand Canyon in the south to Bryce Canyon in the north. It is a place littered with sandstone cliffs, narrow slot canyons, arches, monoliths, winding rivers, high desert, dinosaur tracks, and fossils. Basically, an embarrassment of geological riches.
turning south, we entered the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area in search of a bucket list campsite to call home for the night. More on that later, but first, we would need to navigate a trail that became increasingly rough the closer we got to camp. All right, we just got to our campsite. Check this out. You're not gonna believe this. This is far and away the best view I've ever had at a campsite. Let me show you what we're looking at right now. That is Lake Powell below us. We are at Alstrom Point and the views just go on for days. I saw this campsite um, a couple months ago as I was planning this trip and I rerouted, changed the entire trip to come down here just for this campsite. And we got up here and it's a Monday and it's like 75 degrees out and there's no wind, which is important. And there's nobody else up here. We have this whole place to ourselves. I can't believe it. So this is going to be one hell of an afternoon. Oh, can't wait. We have camped at some incredible places over the years, but this is something totally different. This is just special. All right, so you might be wondering how we stake down our ground tent when we're on super rocky terrain because we can't drive any spikes in. And so this is something that I learned on YouTube. And as we all know, yeah, you can trust people on YouTube, right? Well, maybe, we'll find out. Anyway, what we did is we took some paracord and we attached it to the little loops at the edge of each tent. And then we tied a knot just like that into the end of the loop. And so all we need to do is we just send this through like this, and we're gonna take a small rock. So we got a small rock. We're gonna put this small rock in here. And we're gonna tighten this up just like that. And we're gonna set that right there. And then we're gonna take a big rock like this, and we're gonna put the big rock, but right up against the small rock. So now this, is not going anywhere. This rock is too big for the wind to push it around. So it's super simple, but this is a great way to stake down a ground tent if you don't have a rooftop tent and you're camping somewhere like Utah where there's a lot of rocky terrain.
good morning. Jeff and I got up really early to watch the sunrise and I have to say this campsite is incredible. What do you think? I mean, I think that there's no, there's no need to describe it in words because the, the images speak for themselves. And um, this is probably my favorite camp morning that we've ever had. It's just, it's just so quiet here. There's almost no one here. There's one, one group of people way up there. They're gone now. They're gone now. <laughs> and it was quiet all night. It's quiet this morning. There's no wind at all. And this, this place is known to get windy. So we really lucked out. It's warm. Mm -hmm. Seven thirty in the morning. And I think I've got to shed some layers. Yeah. So. It's like t-shirt weather already. If anyone's wondering, the spot that we're at is called Alstrom Point. It's and not a secret. It's not a secret. It's a well-known spot, even though there's nobody here right now. I think maybe because it's a Monday. Tuesday. But, well, it's a Tuesday now. We got here on a Monday. <laughs> it's Tuesday now. I don't know what day it is. That's the best part about these trips. I forget what day it is. So, yeah, uh, if you want to come up here, what would you think of the road up? I think the road up was fine up until maybe like the last half mile. And just seemed a little, not sketch, but a little harder to see the road through the rocks. Yeah, the, the road kind of disappears and it just kind of turns into rocks and, and um, it's bumpy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know that you'd want to do it in a two-wheel drive. I don't know that you necessarily mm -hmm. could. There's a couple a couple obstacles on the way up, but any stock four-wheel drive should be able to handle it just fine yep. as long as you have a little bit of clearance. So, But the reward is worth it. Totally. Yeah. So what do you think? Should I make breakfast? Yes. I would love some breakfast. Let's do that. dropping some air out of the tires before we head out. I was at about 30 PSI, which was a little bit much for the rocks that we were kind of getting up and over to get here. So dropping it down to 20, and I think that'll give us a little bit better ride on the way out. This was the sort of campsite we could have happily stayed at for days. But the reality of needing to make a substantial amount of miles to reach our next planned stop meant we needed to get back on the trail. And our first challenge would be attempting to retrace our steps over a half mile rocky stretch of mostly unmarked trail. After crawling our way through the rocks, the road smoothed out. We picked up our pace, and a few minutes later, it started to appear as though we had landed on the moon. Uh, very, very fine grain as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Down uh, it's very fine. Down there, step off the limb. That's one small step for man. All right, well, we just pulled off the road to eat a little bit of lunch. We've been on the road for, I don't know, how long we've we been on the road? Four or five hours? Something like that. And uh, 
We pulled off at the Cottonwood Canyon Trailhead. I guess it's a slot canyon you can hike through and it's just off of where we pulled off. So we're gonna go check it out. Corey had his Jimmy John, so he's fueled up. We're ready to go. Okay, well, we're like 30 steps into this canyon and we're already puzzled. I think we're supposed to scramble up there and get up to the top, but it's pretty tight and uh, I don't know if we'll make it. Corey's already noped out, so we're gonna see if there's another way. What's it look like, Christine? I found another way. This canyon was carved over the ages by Cottonwood Creek, which slowly worked its way down through nearly 300 feet of colorful Navajo sandstone. Well, all right, we just made it through the canyon. We didn't go all the way through, but we went about halfway through uh, just to see what was in there. And yeah, pretty cool, easy to get to right off the side of the road. And um, pretty easy once you squeeze through that little narrow entrance. But uh, anyway, time to get back in the trucks and um, head back north. If I'm honest, when I planned this trip, I figured the Grand Staircase would be a good way to connect Zion in the west with Capitol Reef in the east. However, after two days spent traveling through this area, I had come to realize that the Grand Staircase is much more than a connector route. It possesses a beauty that is uniquely its own. And if it's solitude you're looking for, you'll find it here as this area is far less traveled than many others in Utah. And as we neared our exit point from the Grand Staircase, my mind was occupied by all the things we didn't get to see. But I suppose that just gives us a good reason to come back again on a future trip. Okay, well, I thought I was gonna end our video with a drive over Highway 12, but it turns out I gotta show you guys this because it's super cool. This is where we're staying for the night. So after three nights on the road camping, we decided that we wanted to grab uh, some place to stay where we could get a shower, catch up on some laundry, uh, and just relax a little bit. After all, this is vacation for us. So when we're on these longer trips, we like to break them up by, by stay in places. So Christine found this place. It's called Yonder in Escalante, Utah. And it is the most hipster place I have ever been, but in the best of ways. In fact, if you see behind me these classic cars, it's because I am at a drive-in movie theater that's a part of this property. There's the screen right there. Not only do they have a drive-in movie theater, they've got little cabins, which is where we're staying. They have Airstreams you can rent. They've got a food truck. They've got just all kinds of things. So if you're ever in Escalante, I would highly recommend checking this place out if you need some place to stay and catch up on laundry like we did. So anyway, I just thought I would share that with you guys because it's just such a cool and unique place. And we're just going to relax here for the rest of the evening, uh, see what this place has to offer. And then tomorrow we'll be heading out on the next leg of our trip. Wait, hold on. What, it, what hold did on. you just say? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me show you the reveal. Mm. It's delicious. Let me tell you something. There are few things that are better in this world than road trip pizza in small towns. This one came from a place called Escalante Outfitters. They sell hiking gear and hydro flasks and pizza. And this is some damn good pizza. And you learn when you go on road trips that some of the best pizza you find is in these tiny towns in the middle of nowhere. So pro tip, if you see a pizza place in a small town, that's your spot.